Yeah, well, Snapchat, so the division of Google's DeepMind is working with the NHS to use uh, a million anonymous eye scans to use machine learning on those in order to make early detection for eye diseases. This is a UK project using just one data set from one hospital. So it's a million anonymous images, but it's only from one hospital in the UK. And they're just using photographs of the retina direct on and on in a cross-sectional way. So analyzing eye scans is currently a time-consuming manual process, but it's very important for actually detecting the early onsets of like macular de degeneration and diabetic retinopathy. But machines are actually pretty good at using image recognition and finding patterns. So all you do is just feed it all those million images into a, a neural network, into a machine learning. It finds the patterns and finds the disease. So Google reckons with early detection, you could actually prevent up to 98% of people who lose their sight due to diabetes. That's massive. So this is why we need more preventative medicine and more data, more open. And with machine learning rapidly advancing across multiple sectors, you know, across the entire society, um, there's three big issues I see in the entire medical health sector. So the big one is that there's very, very little emphasis on preventative health in the medical system. We're all about fixing the problem after the fact, rather than kind of diagnosing it beforehand and gathering all that data. But then even when biometric and health data and medical data is gathered, it's not shared. Everyone keeps it very proprietary and secret. It's all stored on their servers that no one else can access, only that company can. And finally, there's just not enough data. Like, um, health and, and, and medical is an information process. It's, it's at the core, it's information. Information cures you, saves you from everything. When you visit a doctor, you see them for maybe three minutes. You, you might be lucky if they actually look at you in the eye. <laughs> they might just look at their computer the entire time, make a snap judgment, and then give you a script. That doctor has no idea about my genome, my biochemical makeup, my uh, biometric data over the past week. Um, they're just making very subjective, primitive judgments. I guess let's imagine what we could be doing right now. This is nothing crazy out there in the future. This is like using today's technology, how we could actually create preventative health and medicine, spread it through the system and cure a lot of things. Okay, big one, data collection. So I have very, very little data about myself, about my medical history, about all that sort of things. Um, I don't go in for checkups, like, can you even, what, what even happens in a checkup? Australia's lucky in the fact that we have free basic medical care, but imagine if we had free quarterly, um, really in-depth, like really deep, full day uh, health checkups, yeah. Peter Diamandis, who's this awesome futurist billionaire entrepreneur guy, um, go look up the books Bold and Abundance. So one of his companies is Human Longevity Inc., which is really cool, trying to improve the human life. They're trying to become the largest human genome sequencer in the world, trying to bring it down from the cost of about $1,000 at the moment to mere cents, and then use big data analysis and open data to find insights into that data. One of their subsidiary companies is a partnership with uh, Craig Venter, who's one of the, one of the awesome like, geneticists who create, created the first synthetic life, and this thing's called uh, Health Nucleus. They have a health program that's mostly targeted at the rich right now, but it will drop in, in price very quickly. So it costs $25,000 and you spend eight hours and have a full checkup. So over eight hours, they do like every single diagnostic test you could possibly imagine. So every single blood test, they, take, they do MRIs, they sequence your entire genome, they take yeah, just everything, an entire map. So imagine when we get to the point where that, that technology, that kind of in-depth uh, analysis and data, data kind of mining of your body <laughs> is available to everyone really cheap. You'd go in and have this done, say, every quarter or every half year or every year, like pick whenever you want to do it, and that means you have a pretty accurate snapshot of your health over time, which you can then data mine and find insight. You can combine that with your medical history and then some type of like 24-7 uh, uh, passive biometric monitoring, imagine like a more advanced Fitbit that monitors all your data and uploads it to that same data set. Now your personal health, your personal medicine becomes a preventative thing that not only you can access and get insights into, but your doctors are monitoring and uh, they're notified when something is wrong. With all that data, what we can do is move to a world where you don't go to a doctor because you're sick. You are called in by your doctor because your doctor and the machine learning algorithms running on that data have noticed something and want to call you in. By merging health professionals and data scientists, you can basically prevent the vast majority of diseases and notice them before they, they occur. Things like uh, age-related diseases, cancers, everything. The next big thing we then need to do is anonymize that data, open it, and share it globally. It needs to be accessible, universally accessible on a simple, open, decentralized, accessible system. I know most companies tend to have this like uh, cultural thought virus where they're like, I must maintain all the data and keep it secret. You know, our data is our value. That's our, that's our patentable information. And then individuals have this mostly irrational privacy concern that their data is going to be used for malicious purposes in the future. But when you combine these two things together, humanity is missing out on a huge amount of progress and potential. Machine learning works best when we have a huge amount of data and open data so we can actually cross-reference things and it can find patterns in the, in, in, the, in the genomes, in the biometric data, in the health data. Like imagine if every single human being on the planet had, uh, like, you know, over 7 billion people had their full genomes, their, all these diagnostic tests, uh, all their biometric health data, all openly available to everyone to use. 
data scientists could then download that data and they could analyze it. They could run machine learning algorithms over it. You could have X prize competitions where there's prize money put up for finding certain insights into the data. I mean, that amount of data would be in the you know, petabytes, the exabytes, like huge amounts of data. And we could run supercomputing resources over this data using machine learning algorithms to find patterns and find insights. And this is probably something where like the blockchain and DAOs and all that sort of thing would probably come in again because uh, even at the highest level, the highest vision of governments, they're talking about national health systems, but we need global health systems. I think we all want to live in a world free of cancer, disease, death, and unnecessary human suffering. So let's all openly share our biomedical data and expedite the future. Snappy thoughts, our future.